Hello again. Here is a simple and depressing fact. Every year in the United Kingdom, over half a million people die. Most of them are old and they're dying because they've essentially reached the end of their lives. This is a natural process which is usually sad for family and friends, but not in any way unusual. The news that about a sixth of the people who died last year had tested positive for COVID-19 doesn't really affect this natural state of affairs. I am not a COVID sceptic, which is to say that I believe that a virus called COVID-19 exists and that some people die of it. There's a bit more to the case than that, though. Looking first at the rise in the number of cases of COVID, which has led to the lockdown and closing of schools and all the rest of it, it's not difficult to see what has caused this huge increase in confirmed cases of the virus. It's because we are testing more and more people. If there were no tests for COVID, and I'm going to return to this point in a short while, if there were no tests for COVID, then there would be no confirmed cases, of course. The more we look for COVID and test for it, the more we're going to find it. If we were looking instead for the common cold and testing people for that, then we would find that the number of confirmed cases of the common cold were also rising sharply every week. The more we test for it, the more we'll find. If we scaled back the testing for COVID, and that had actually happened with some respiratory diseases, I'll come to that in a moment, then cases would of course fall and it might look as though the epidemic were declining. It's as simple as that. The number of deaths is rather a different matter. Let me deal with that before I return to the question of testing. Um, it's a bit more complicated. More people have died in the last year per thousand of the population than since the flu epidemic of 2003. <coughs> the mortality rate hasn't been as bad as 2000 though, which is good. To understand why so many people are apparently dying of COVID, even though the actual rate isn't really that extraordinary looked at over the last few decades, we need to see what doctors put on death certificates. At one time, when a person of 83 died, that's the average age, incidentally, of those dying with a diagnosis of COVID, the doctor would simply put old age or natural causes down, and that was that. After all, people in their 80s and 90s often have all sorts of things wrong with them, and it can be hard to work out what actually finishes them off in the end. I'm sure many viewers will have had parents, aunts and uncles, other old relatives dying and know this. If they look at the death certificate, they're often surprised to see how much has been put down. OK, you can't put old age or natural causes down anymore. It's explicitly forbidden. In the description to this video, I give a link to the government guidance to doctors on how to complete death certificates. They must in general list all the illnesses which might have been connected with the person's death. The result is that death certificates for old people often have a list of ailments. My mother-in-law, who was in her 80s, had listed on the death certificate chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, carcinoma of the breast, chronic kidney disease and pneumonia. This is fairly typical. People are still dying of these things, especially pneumonia and flu. But it's a lot easier for doctors now because if the person had a COVID test a month ago, even if he or she had no symptoms or recovered quickly, they can just put that down and be done with all the rest of the fiddly and fussy illnesses. In fact, they can put COVID down even if the person <coughs> didn't have a test, provided they were coughing a bit before they died. This is common, of course, with pneumonia, flu and COVID. But the guidance specifically says that without diagnostic proof, if appropriate and to avoid delay, medical practitioners can circle two in the MCCD. That's the medical cause, cause of death. Um, information from post-mortem may be available later or tick, tick B for anti-mortem 
investigations. For example, if before death the patient had symptoms typical of COVID-19 infection, but the test result has not been received, it would be satisfactory to give COVID-19 as the cause of death. In the circumstances of there being no swab, it's satisfactory to apply COVID jud uh, clinical judgment. This inevitably means that an awful lot of people with pneumonia and flu are having COVID marked down as the cause of death. I also attach a link to the government report on deaths from COVID and flu in the week ending yesterday, which is January the 28th. We read that there is currently limited testing for other respiratory viruses. However, laboratory indicators suggest that influenza activity is low. In other words, doctors are testing for COVID and little else. It's hardly surprising then that COVID is what they are finding. This has led to the utterly bizarre <laughs> result that flu no longer exists in this country. A triumph of medicine, if true. We read in the official government report, and I provide a link in the description to this video, that through respiratory data mart, there were no influenza positive samples tested in week three. Is that clear? No cases of flu in the whole of the United Kingdom last week. The truth is, of course, that because of what is described as limited testing for other respiratory viruses, nobody is actually looking for flu at the moment. It is this which has eradicated the disease from Britain. If the doctors would stop testing for COVID and focus their efforts on testing for flu, then COVID cases would fall to zero and we would have a flu epidemic instead.